This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about dirty nodes and clean mining pools. And this video is a follow-up to Saturday's video, which was called Bitcoin Knots versus Bitcoin Core Summarized. So if you haven't been following all these issues, I'd encourage you to watch that video first. I'll put a link to it in the description notes below. Parman has a good summary here. Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Core 30, will be used as a mule for free, unstoppable CP slash CSAM by sickos or state actors in order to attack Bitcoin and prosecute those who knowingly allow it. So I wanted to follow up on that and do another thought experiment along these lines. Let's say that Core 30 node mempools are full of 100 kilobyte high fidelity CSAM op return transactions after Core 30 is widely rolled out. Now let's say one of these transactions gets, gets mined by a US mining pool. What happens next? Well, probably the US government goes into high gear and tells US government re regulated Foundry and Mara, these are US American mining pools, tells them that they need to start censoring transactions that contain CSAM. Something similar happened a few years ago when Mara voluntarily actually started censoring monetary transactions that the US government didn't like. This is from May of 2021. Uh, it was called Marathon Digital Holdings back then, but it's Mara today. Mara becomes the first North American enterprise miner to produce fully AML and OFAC compliant Bitcoin. OFAC, of course, is just the Office of Foreign Assets Control. This is part of the US Treasury, and it has a list of things that they don't want mining pools to mine. So what happened next? Bitcoiners went into high gear in May of 2021. They called out Mara. Mara's stock began to plummet, and Mara stopped mining OFAC compliant blocks. And all Bitcoiners are on board with the notion that miners should never censor monetary transactions, even or especially if a government doesn't like them. So now let's fast forward to the problems that Bitcoin Core 30 will cause. Let's say the U.S. government tells U.S. government regulated Foundry and Mara mining pools that they need to start censoring transactions that contain CSAM. Now, it's very easy to call out and boycott Mara when they're enforcing OFAC compliance. But will you be one of those people standing up publicly and telling Mara and the U.S. government that they should not be censoring large op return transactions that contain CSAM. How will that be publicly received? Quote, Bitcoiners are defending the rights of miners to mine CSAM. I just don't see that happening. That's going to go over like a lead balloon. So Bitcoiners won't really be able to protest and will now be stuck with government enforced filters at the mining pool level that apply to US regulated miners. Will the Chinese government do the same? That's where all the other mining pools are, a majority of the hash. Probably, I can't even imagine that the CCP likes CSAM. And at that point, mining pools will become the saviors of the Bitcoin network. This is a really weird development, protecting it from all the filth that Bitcoin Core 30 nodes are relaying around the network. And that's why I call this video Dirty Nodes, Clean Mining Pools. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now, this flip in the power dynamics will exacerbate what is already a really bad problem with mining pool centralization. We can see Foundry here, we can see Mara here, and we can see Anpool and a couple of the other Chinese mining pools. If we look at this, uh, this is an even better uh, representation of the hash rate distribution. Anpool and friends all in China, Foundry in the US via BTC in China as well. So we already have mining pool centralization. As Mechanic points out here, I've expressly laid out the reason I want us not to relay stuff that no sane miner would put in the chain. This is precisely because I want to prevent the miner curating of content that will inevitably manifest should we rip spam filters out of the nodes. I'll say it again. If you make the PDP layer retarded, the mining layer becomes the adult in the room. That's a really, really good point, and I hope Bitcoin Core devs are thinking about this. Nodes should only relay transactions and minimal amounts of data. If their mempools become dumping grounds for large amounts of anonymously uploaded objectionable data, then what few miners there are in the world will end up getting pressured to start running the nuanced heuristics that Adam Back and I are against. And this is part of the scenario that Mechanic already laid out a few days ago. Here's what's going to happen when Core 30 
rolls out. A hundred kilobyte op returns become standard. Someone inevitably broadcasts something that triggers malware detection. All Bitcoin cloud infrastructure gets knocked offline. Major, major disruption to exchanges and pools, they go offline. Panic results in Band-Aid solutions as we can't hard fork to rip whatever it is out. And here's number six, which is related to what we've been talking about today. Template creating pools being almost completely centralized or lobby to run custom filters to sift this stuff out in the future. Parenthesis, why couldn't we just have not relayed this stuff in the first place by leaving data carrier size where it was? Number seven, the already next to impossible task of decentralizing mining is made significantly harder. Running a node is now reckless, requires tertiary software to maintain a clean mempool. We are now a data storage network where only approved data can make it in rather than a monetary network where all arbitrary data was undesirable. And I think it gets even worse. Now imagine that there's a single Bitcoin address that starts to receive enormous amounts of CSAM, CSAM op return spam. We'll call it the big evil Bitcoin address. This big evil Bitcoin address gets blacklisted by all the big mining pools in the world who refuse to mine any transactions that go into that address or come out of that address. And at that point, the Bitcoin network may be in big trouble because bad actors will send transactions that involve this big evil Bitcoin address. They'll send it to every mempool in the world. At that point, you're going to need to add a special filter to every single node to filter out stuff involving that address. Otherwise, this becomes a mempool DOS attack of sorts. Have Bitcoin core devs considered the implications of this slippery slope that they're taking us down? Wouldn't it just have been simpler just to leave op return limits where they've been for the past decade? I'm going to put a link in the description notes below to all of these free resources that show you how, can you, how you can run a Bitcoin Knots node and help to protect the Bitcoin network. And I will see you either on Wednesday or Thursday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.